Hello, it's Mary at Royalty Unikis, and today I'm going to do a tutorial about getting your puppies groomed. Uh, Cooper and Pasha are going to head to their new homes tomorrow, so we're going to go ahead and get them ready to look great for their new families. Okay, here's Pasha. She's on our little grooming table. I'm going to mist her lightly with a detangler. And this is a boar's hair brush with pins on the outside, so it kind of detangles and does it easily without pulling on the coat. So I'm just gently going kind of from the back, working my way up to the front. And this brush is pretty gentle, but her coat is very fine and fragile. So I'm trying to be very careful with her. And you can see she's not used to being up here on the grooming table, so she's a little nervous. But by the end of this, she'll be much more prepared for grooming in her new home. So I don't worry about a lot of the small tangles. I'm just trying to get the main tangles out before we add water and make the mats set in. It's usually better to use to comb out a clean coat, but if you can get some of those initial tangles out, that will make your job a little bit easier once you do give her a bath. Okay, okay and now we have Cooper on the grooming table. You can see he's pretty pretty scruffy looking. So we just gently start from the back and kind of work our way to the front. We're trying to get out some of those main tangles before we give them a bath. And you can see it's already smoothing him out and making him look nice. Okay, now we're going to give Cooper and Pasha a bath. I've got the water set for a really gentle stream so they're not scared. You want to test the water on the inside of your wrist to make sure that it's not too hot, just like you would a baby bottle. And it's actually a little bit cold, so I'm going to turn it up a little bit so that they don't get chilled. So we want them to be as comfortable as possible. And you do have to worry about little leaky puppies getting chilled. So we're going to start by getting them in damp. I'm going to lift them up and get thunder so that their paws are clean. Brush are concentrating on the potty areas. Okay, so now we've shampooed Pasha twice and now we're rinsing her. And now we're going to finish off with Cooper a little bit with his final shampoo. And this is a nice product because the shampoo and the conditioner is already built into one product, so you have less, less to mess with. So just massaging, making sure that back end and the undercarriage and the hot pads are nice and soaked up. And then just a little bit of rinsing. The stuff does rinse pretty nicely. Okay, now I've got Cooper and Pasha. I've towel dried them a little bit and now I'm going to actually dry them on my lap because it makes them feel a little more secure. So uh, I've actually got a dryer by Andis. It's a pet hair dryer and I just set it on the table and I kind of move the puppy as opposed to the dryer and that way I'm keeping them warm and comfortable. So a lot of times I do add a little bit of conditioner spray as I'm drying them because in Colorado it is a little bit easy to dry out 
a Mickey's coat, so this will help keep it conditioned. So we just try to keep it the least traumatic for them by keeping them comfortable on your lap and having the blow dryer just blow on them from the table. Okay, now that Cooper is dry, we're going to try to get all the tangles out. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to start out with a slicker brush. I like the little pal slicker brushes with the little covered pins at the end. It just makes it a little more comfortable. So you can use a little bit of a detangler first, but he's still slightly damp. So I don't think we'll damage the coat at this point. So you just start out at the bottom, and then you're going to use the end of the comb with the whiter teeth, and try to get out some of those tangles. You can put your fingers between the skin and the tangle so that you're not pulling on your pet's tangles and pulling their skin. Just like you would on a human's hair who had tangles, you would put your fingers between the scalp and the comb so that you're not pulling on the scalp. You're doing, you're making sure that you're not damaging the skin and making this an uncomfortable experience for your puppy. So you can see I'm pulling out some of the tangles and the knots. And I'm just gonna work my way level by level with the slicker brush and the comb. You can also use a V comb like this to pull out some of the bigger tangles. It just is a little more gentle and breaks up some of those mats so that you can, and I've always got my fingers between the comb and the skin so that I'm not scratching their skin and I'm not hurting the puppy. So you kind of work from the bottom and you're gonna work your way up the coat all the way to the top until you get all the tangles out. And you can keep using a detangler to keep the coat from breaking. And since his is so fragile, I'm just going to be very, very gentle and not force anything so that I don't break the coat. You always have to be super gentle because they have the little tiny bird bones and you don't want to put cause any dislocation with the patella. So you never put any pressure on the joints. So this is why a lot of people tend to shave their puppies down because they don't want to mess with the tangles and risk hurting their pet, which is totally fine. But since he's going to his new home, I want him to have a nice fluffy coat first and then they can decide what they want to do with it after. See what their lifestyle's like. Okay, I've been working on Cooper's coat and I found a pretty big mat back here that I'm not going to want to try to comb out. I'm going to get some of it combed out, but I'm going to use my V comb a little bit. And of course, I've got my fingers between the tangle and his skin. But some of this is probably going to have to be cut out. And the way I like to do that is with some thinning shears because it doesn't leave a harsh um, cut mark. So it still blends. So he's being super great. You can work on the tangle as much as you can. You can try to pull it apart with your fingers but I'm thinking that some of it's probably going to have to be trimmed out because it's pretty tangly. So you can see I've got my fingers between the tangle and his skin. So he doesn't love it, but he's not, not doing too bad. So that's, you just work it from every direction. I'm protecting his skin 
with my fingers, just coming from all different directions, making sure the slicker brush doesn't come into contact with his skin because even with the little protective covers on the prongs, I just want to make sure it doesn't hurt him because we want to make grooming as pleasant of an experience as it can be. So, so that probably hurt a little bit. So you can see he's reacting a little bit, but I think he's doing super great. So you can see, I just got all that out of his back. But if you did have a tangle, like behind his ears or something like that, you can get behind the mat and you can just trim the little mat right out of there without having a harsh line. So I'm just going to do that with this little piece here. And I just kind of move it around and then I pull out the mat. You can see that the thinning shears are perfect for that because again, it doesn't create a harsh cutting line. So then I just come over it to make sure or use the slicker brush to make sure I got it all. And again, putting my fingers between his skin and the tangles to make sure it doesn't cause him any harm. And I'm also protecting his face from the spray with my hand. So trying to be really careful. You want to make sure that when you're grooming these little tiny guys that you're offering them snacks in between some of the jobs you're doing because it takes a lot of energy for shivering and trying to warm up after the bath. A lot of times if you take your pet to a professional groomer they'll come back just exhausted because it's a lot. So if you're grooming them yourself, do give them a little snacks and little breaks so that they can use the potty and have a little snack and a drink of water. And that makes it easier on their little bodies to get the full groom without being completely exhausted. So this is a little portable um, tabletop grooming table that I got on Amazon. I don't remember how much it was, but it's it's nice because you can just put it away in the closet when you're not using it. But it's always good to have your puppy secured in the little noose so that they don't fall off. We do not want to walk away from the table while they're on the noose because obviously they could slip off and hang themselves. So if you have to go get something, go ahead and take off the noose and then take them with you or put them on the ground. So we're gonna let Cooper have a little break and we're gonna work on Pasha.
Okay, as you can see, Pasha's not quite as excited about getting combed out. But that's okay. We're going to work with her so that she is more comfortable with grooming at her new home. So I'm using this boar's hair brush with the pins on the outside because she's pretty tangly. Because like I said, she and her brother love wrestling with each other. And we want to encourage that, of course, because playful puppies are happy puppies. So we're just kind of working our way from the bottom towards the top. Just being ever so gentle. I'm not digging the pins into her coat. I'm just kind of pulling the hair away from her body. I'm trying to break up those tangles a little bit. So I use this first. And after a while, they kind of get used to the feeling. It tickles a little bit, actually. So that's why you see a little bit of a wiggling. But she also isn't used to being in the, the safety noose. Okay, so we're gonna use a little bit of the conditioning spray so we don't break the coat. And again, we're gonna start at the bottom of her leg and I'm putting my fingers between her skin and the bristles because even though they're plastic coated I want to make it as comfortable as possible and I send these brushes and combs home with every puppy so you will have what they're used to so she's got some good tangles back here. So we're gonna try our V comb. I'm putting my fingers between the comb and her skin. She's still reacting a bit, but she's just kind of reacquainting herself with the sensation of getting combed out. So here's a nice big tangle. I think that'll just come out with the wide comb first. And then the narrow comb went ahead and pulled out the tangle. So there's that little mat. So just trying to get some of those tangles out with the corner. If that doesn't work, then you can use your big V comb. So it does take some effort, of course, but it's worth it if you want to keep their coats long. And I think it's nice to give the dogs a little bit of length because it protects them from the sun and the cold. So I know a lot of people think they need to shave their dogs down, but her coat is actually pretty thin. And if she was completely shaved down, I think she would have a lot of UV exposure. Not that she'll probably spend a ton of time outside just because she's so small. You don't want her to get eaten by a predator, but so you can see I'm just pulling out all these little micro tangles and once we get those out, it'll be a lot easier to keep her maintained when she's not wrestling with her brother all the time. Just a little bit of detangler, not so much that that um, it makes the coat sticky, but enough to keep the coat pliable and less prone to breaking. And Pasha and Cooper both have their mother's super fine, soft, silky coat. So it does take some effort to keep it nice, but it's a really beautiful coat when it's all combed out. Okay, so I have my nail clippers. And it's always good to use good lighting 
Um, of course, Pasha's nails are dark, so I'm just going to nip the tips off. And hopefully that way I won't cut them too short, but I always have stip stick powder in case I do get a little bit too short. And her dew claws were removed, so we don't have to worry about those, but some breeders leave those on. We tend to try to remove them because they can get caught on things and can be problematic as adults. And it's much more easy to handle them in a 30 second procedure as a newborn than it is when they're adults. So now we're doing the rears and the rears tend to wear more than the front. So you really don't want to take very much off the back. And again, her nails are mostly dark, so I can't see the quick. So I'm just kind of going by where it's starting to change shape. I just take off the thin part at the top and don't go any farther than that. She does have a couple of white nails, so I can be a little more bold with those and maybe go a little shorter, but most of them are black. So getting those out of the way first is very helpful because when you're trimming up the feet, then you don't have to worry about the nails being in the way. So next we're going to do the pop heads. Okay, I like to use the wall mini Arco for my puppies because it's quite small and it's easier to use with small dogs. And you're going to want to use the oil that came with it, but I went through all mine. So you just put a little bit of oil in the ridges to make it work well. So you want to do that before and after you're using it. You can use a dry toothbrush to clean out your, your blade when you're done. So to start on the feet, I'm going to go ahead and just gently take off the, the fur around the paw pads. So then got a little bit of oil on it, but, and then I take the, make a little U around the paw pad. I've got some curved scissors here. You can use straight ones, but sometimes the curved ones are nice. And I can see that I missed a little bit there with the, Clippers, but we'll grab it. So you're going to leave the fur at the back of the foot long and get that manually when their foot is flat. So again, I'm going to kind of shave just as much as you can without getting too close. get down into the between the pads a little bit but I don't try to go too far because these guys are so little and I don't want to cut them so just very gently making that U shape around the paw pad with my curved scissors and we've already taken off the nails, so they're not as problematic. So you can see that it's already looking like a nice little paw pad, like a little cute paw. So now I'm going to gently bend the front paw. Just 
Just protecting those joints as much as you can. You just don't want to to be so careful with these little tiny puppy joints, not bend them in awkward positions. And I'm just making a little U shape around the paw. Guess I missed a tangle. She's letting me know. Okay, so then I'm gonna get this paw pad. So shaving the paws just helps keep your pet cleaner. Less likely to pick up germs and less likely to get infections between the pads. So then I'm going to make the little U shape. All right. So once you've got them trimmed from the underside, you can start combing out the hair when they're standing and see how you might like to trim the paw a little bit more. And straight scissors work just as well. I just happen to, to said I don't like that snappy sound. So you only trim where you can see obviously because you don't want to cut something like a paw pad or something like that. So I'm just trimming a nice round shape. It's mostly already there. I'm just neatening up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and move her. I can also spin this to make adjustments, but because she's so little, I can also just move her. And you may have to stop recording because I see the delivery truck coming to the house and you know how the dogs are about being the doorbell. So just being very gentle. And I'm just neatening. I guess I missed a tangle here, but we'll get get those combed out. So I'm just getting some of the little hairs that are sticking out. If you need to, you can also lift your pet up like this to really get under there and make sure you've got all the tangles and all the hair. Sometimes that's a little easier angle. So now we have some pretty paws and they do have a bone sticking out here. It's kind of there. You need to be careful of that, mindful of it. Do not get it in the teeth of your comb because you can hurt them. So just doing a really nice little neatening up of the paws. Only where I can see. And I do kind of like the, the curved scissors just to have a little better angle. 
but you can use straight scissors as well. All right, so now she's starting to look pretty good, but I see that I missed a little tangle right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get that a little bit with the, I'm at a couple different angles with my slipper and then very gently work my comb through it and it already came out, so. She's looking really, really pretty. You can just see how the comb is like mostly just gliding through and if it doesn't, then I just put my fingers between the tangle and her skin and I comb it out. So next, we have our lovely assistant, Bitsy. I'm going to take the clippers and I'm going to do the girl parts. You don't want to get too close because if you do, it can cause razor burn and that's just not pleasant. So. so I didn't actually touch her, but she was just getting nervous. So then I'm switching sides and I'm holding her little leg like she's a little boy dog, like she's going to lift her leg and I'm holding that tail away so that I have access. So she's a little bit nervous about the clippers because she's not that familiar with them, but usually you start on the paws and then start going more towards the sensitive areas, such as the potty area. So for the, the back area, I try to take off some of the length because it can get a bit, if you're gonna have hangers, dingleberries as my, as the vet techs call them, you're often gonna get them back here. So I'm gonna take Bitsy down because she's trying to make her movie debut. And I don't need, I don't need another dog messing with me when I'm doing a sensitive area such as this. So I do like to use the thinning shears for this. Just I'm taking off a little length. I'm kind of combing it straight out from the body and just taking a little length off so that there's less of a chance of, she just needs a good landing strip essentially. So that's how I deal with the back end. All right, so Pasha has a really beautiful face and I wanna make sure that we bring out the best. I'm gonna take this off so that I can hold her and make sure I get all the hair combed out around her neck. So I'm kind of combing everything out away from her face. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to make a nice round shape. So you can either use like the round type scissors for that, just to kind of neaten up the face. You can also use the thinning shears. The thinning shears are maybe a little more forgiving because it's not such a harsh, um, cut. So you can just keep working at it. And it also kind of gets her used to the sound of scissors. So I'm just basically making a round shape, taking a little bit off the top. And I do like the thinning shears, especially for the puppies with the really fine coats, because if you take a harsh line of regular scissors, it just makes it a lot, a lot more dark. So I'm just combing it up and kind of evening things up with these thinning shears. Of course, I'm avoiding the ears. You can see I'm kind of coming out more things that I can get. I do tend to get a little bit back behind the Miki ear because that way you can see 
their mobile ears, which is one of the traits of the breed. So you kind of want to show that off. And you do that with a little bit of thinning behind the ears. And I can see a few little tangles that I missed because of the safety noose. So again, I think there are like combing sprays that help the hair to stand up a little bit more. But because we're in Colorado and it's really dry, we have static electricity that's helping me sort of see the shape of her head. So then you just kind of comb it out and see how it's looking. Nothing's too harsh. And I like to do, again, back behind the ears, making sure not to trim the ears because you want to see just a few snips back there because you're just making those mobile ears more apparent on the breed because that is their signature look. So if you had a puppy that had an ear that was maybe one up, one down, you can take some of the weight off of one ear to try to kind of even them out a little bit. You can do that here. Just take it off here just to make their ears a little bit lighter, a little less weight. It probably helps with the mobility look, but it also kind of blends the ear from the top of the head. So I'm gonna maybe round out a little bit more. Um, she's too young for like a show cut, so I'm not gonna do the whole head shooting thing. I like to keep the soft puppy look for my babies. I'm going to go ahead and define her head a little bit. Just picturing a little round circle. And of course they're going to move. They're going to make you a little bit crazy and that's okay. If it's not perfect. Just comb it out and take some thinning shears. So I'm paying attention to the black in particular on her coat because I want that really nice and even because her markings are so pretty. So I'm just rounding out the black. So sometimes I make funny sounds to get them to look at me instead of looking at the scissors. And then I can keep working on the coat and on the look that I'm going for. So just kind of rounding out. her little features because I think we're always attracted to the roundness of puppies. So just a little bit. Evening out things. And then kind of take some of the distractions out so I can see what I'm looking at. So we're just kind of giving a little definition to her head. She's got a little bit of a buzz right there. So I'm going to take a little bit by her ears with the spinning shears. Let's see if I can get this closer to the camera. So that's just to keep the ears a little bit healthier. 
a little less a little less hair in the ear area. And I do like to use a thinning shears for this. You can also kind of even out around the front of the face and the brow. So again, I'm going to do the other ear. Both for practical reasons, for the health of the ear, and because it gives that definition of the ear. So you can see it better. So always combing and adjusting and seeing where else you might want to trim. It's always easier to go slow and take off a little bit than too much and regret it. It will grow back. So, and then to do the bang trim, I start combing the bangs down towards the face. And again, I'm going to use the thinning shears to, she's getting tired, poor girl. We're all getting tired. Thinning shears for the bangs. And I especially like to do the thinning shears on these dogs with the stark colors because they start looking, if you do like a, a harsh line with just a straight edge scissor, you will get really choppy looking markings. And I'm just trying to make a nice soft, soft look, nothing too harsh. And again, much more forgiving than the sharp edge. So just kind of rounding out the top and I send them home maybe a little bit shorter than I like the way they to look because I know it's probably going to be a while till they get to the groomer. So I want to give them a little more grow out time before they need to go. So as far as the eye area, I tend to start pulling it out away from the bridge of the nose with my fingers. You can either use scissors like this. You're going to make two little V's. And I usually do that by holding the chin. And I do that so I have a little more control over their faces so they're not jerking. Okay, so I'm making little V cuts so that I'm not, I'm trying to keep that blaze of hers looking somewhat even. And then you can take your little comb and kind of brush out the face. You can see I got a few little tangles that I missed. Probably they were stuck under the, the noose. And just pull those out. So I do try to get the puppies used to using the little clippers around the eyes because I think it's a little cleaner look. But sometimes they don't tolerate it. So, but I do subject them to the sound so that when they go to your groomer, that they can be familiar with it. So we'll see how she does with this. I'm just grabbing her little chin here. And I'm just trying to get this little corner up against the bridge of her nose. And you can see she's not gonna cooperate with it. So I'm just gonna let her sniff it, get familiar with it. We're just going to keep this as happy as we possibly can so that she's used to the sound. Whether or not I actually get to use it today is entirely different. Okay, so she doesn't want to use it today, but it's just part of getting puppies used to grooming. And so it's okay. We'd rather not have a little accident 
You can also use the thinning shears around the bridge of the nose because you can see she has a jagged edge up towards her eyes. So I'm going to take the thinning shears and I'm going to just kind of take a little bit so it's a little neater edge. So some people use treats to make this go better, but I just try to get through it slowly. And I'm always very careful around the eyes. I'm going to take off a little more off the top. Kind of make that glaze kind of even. So that no matter which way the wind's blowing, it always looks nice. And then you just comb it out to check your work, see if you've got any harsh lines. So I'm going to take my little line comb and try to get combed out around her eyes so I can see what I've done. Again, all of this handling prepares them for future grooming so that they are not as concerned about it when they go see their, their groomer when they're at your house. So I could probably get a little more around her face, but the great thing about grooming on your own is you can come back to it the next day if you don't like something. And just do a little tweaking. So I'm just doing a little bit around her neck just to give her head a little more definition. But I don't want anything too substantial. And the thing with the thinning shears is you want to trim and then brush so you can kind of see. You don't think you're actually taking anything off, but you actually are. So you have to do it a little bit at a time. And for us non-professional groomers, the thinning shears are pretty great because they're very forgiving. So they have just little tiny teeth. There are also the chunking shears. Um, these are not as forgiving. These will give you big chunks, but sometimes these are nice to use like around the back end if you want to take more hair off quickly. You can just do like a quick, you only want to do a couple little trims because it takes off a lot of hair quickly. So Hosh is pretty much done. That's basically how we get our puppies ready for their new homes. And I think her mom will be super happy to see her finally since she's almost four months old because she's so little. Okay, I wanted to show you that when you do trim your puppy's nails too short, what you have to do is get a little of this quick stop styptic powder, pour some in the lid. Unfortunately, Cooper like jumped the wrong time and so I nipped him a little bit too short. It does happen. But this has a little bit of painkiller in it too. So we're just going to get it all nice and covered with the styptic powder. And that takes care of the bleeding. So, all right. So I want to show you how to do the, the sanitary areas. So you're going to comb out the backside and I hold up the tail. And I'm going to use the little trimmers and I'm going to not touch the skin, but I'm just going to go back and forth just to make sure he doesn't sit down. And 
then you can do a little more combing. This is where I like to use those um, chunky shears with the bigger teeth. It's on the back just to give myself a nice round shape back there and to have less of a chance of debris collecting back there. So just taking out quite a bit of hair to make sure that the backside stays clean. So, and then you can comb it out and see how it looks. Brush it out. You can kind of do a nice little U there with regular scissors just to make it tidy. Gotta hold that tail out. Just very carefully making a U in there. And then you can do some shaving on the inner thigh area because that's where a lot of the matting tends to be. So just a little bit of shaving in there without touching the skin. And then to do the boy parts, I already did some of it, but here you can lift them up like this and be very, very gentle and careful. There's skin right here that you do not want to hit with the razor, so you want to make sure you avoid that. You just kind of uh, make sure it's all tidy down there so there's clearance for him to go to the restroom. And being super careful around that loose skin. Just keeping things really nice and tidy so that there's, when you're picking them up, there's less for you to touch that's wet. So I can see I missed a few little tangles. So I'll get those. But that's how you handle the sanitary areas on a bowl water. All right, to do Cooper's face, I'm going to make a nice round shape. Just kind of under his chin so that we can see more of his white chest. And you can also move the ears back so that you can see better if they cooperate. Get them in there. Just making a nice round shape around his face. Now my scissors are dark and it's hard to see. So I don't have anything fancy. These are just some I got off of Amazon. They do the job. professional, perhaps I would invest more in my scissors, but I'm not. So he's got one ear that's flopping down. So I'm going to come and do a little bit of thinning on this one side to try to help it stand up a little bit more so they match. The angle with the rope isn't doing so well, but we'll see if he, he will work with me on this. He's a little bit nervous. So just using a little bit of thinning shears to try to take a little bit of the weight off from this one ear because it isn't matching the other one. Okay, I wanted to show one more thing about the part. 
So I do a little conditioner and then I calm the coat down back like so. And then I take a rat tail comb and I'm going to go down the spine with that tip and it usually tickles. So you kind of have to work with them. And then you're just moving down the spine a little bit by a little bit, coming down the sides. And that's how you get the nice part down the back. Just like a future show dog. And you can use a little more conditioner to help it stay. Now she looks like a beautiful little mini show dog. And now she's just four months old. So that's our Pasha girl. And that's our cute little groomed puppies ready for their new home. Thank you.